Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to this little kind of Windows anniversary experiment. Steinberg recently posted on their website that after you've installed the anniversary update, their testing has shown that you may find a 5 to 10% drop in performance. Hmm, that's very interesting and also quite devastating. So we are on the eve of the anniversary update. The update should hit at some point tomorrow. So I thought if I can, I'm going to run a quick load of benchmarks on Cubase and other bits of software on my system to see if there is any performance change at all once the update has gone through. So I'm gonna run some tests now that we'll record on video and then we'll sit it side by side when I run the tests again in a couple of days. By then the update should have installed. We have no way to prevent it coming. It's just gonna come in from Microsoft and devour our computers. It's coming. <laughs> There's nothing we can do except to hold on and brace ourselves. Being the optimistic sort of chap that I am, I'm kind of assuming it's gonna be a good thing but uh, the post by Steinberg is definitely very troubling. So anyway, here's a bunch of tests on here. I'm also gonna do some tests on the Surface Pro 4 just for a comparison, and we'll see what happens in a couple of days. This is the door bench test. We are currently running at 128 samples. I have 40 tracks of audio set up with eight inserts of the Reacom standalone multi-compressor. So that's 320 plugins in total, which is enough to sync a lot of systems. My system here is not doing too bad. So we're gonna play this back and just take some video of the performance that's running down here. It's not exactly a precise test because this performance meter is not devastatingly precise, but all we're after really is some kind of comparison. This is a Pro Tools 12 D-verb test where you load up a bunch of D-verbs over multiple tracks. Here I've got 96 tracks of audio, all with four D-verbs loaded. And we're gonna record uh, a signal generator going through all of those tracks and record what sort of system usage is going on. This is FL Studio before the update. I don't have any clever projects in here particularly, so this is a demo song called Bahain Banakar. And we're just gonna play this and take a look at the CPU meter at the top. test in Reason 9. This is very similar to the Cubase Halion test where I've got a whole bunch of different synths loaded up and I'm just going to run the same sort of eight notes through it as I did in Halion. And here they are, I've got a whole load of tracks set up. So that's all but the last one. Just says down here is called Six Oscillator Fat. On the DSP meter, you can see that it's, it's filling up nicely. Mm. 
Here's a, a fairly large project in Bitwig, but I'm still not particularly filling up the CPU, but let's run this scene seven. Just take a few moments of this. This is the Halium Polyphony test on the Surface Pro 4. We are running about 31 Halions, and that is just about all this can take. Let's have a look. Ableton Live before the update. It's a simple project using five Arturia synths. Running at about 20 21 percent. So with movement in. running at sort of 38%. So what do we think about that? Well, there's not a lot in it, is there? No, not really, not that I could see. I mean, the, the results seem pretty much identical. There was one test, the Hanion test on the Surface Pro 4 that did seem to indicate a tiny, tiny little bit of extra processing, but really it kind of falls into the margin of error. So with these tests, with what I did, it seems to say that there really isn't a performance difference between Windows 10 and the Windows 10 anniversary update. And that's a really good thing. However, I should stress that the tests I've done are just sort of cobbled together simple tests on a couple of projects and a couple of bits of software. You know, I kind of threw it together the night before the update when I had this inspired idea that I really should take some kind of benchmark. So they shouldn't be taken as absolute gospel. It's just, I did one test, I ran an update, I did another test. I haven't spent weeks putting it together. It was just very much off the cuff. So hopefully it's an indication of what's going on. And if there was a massive problem, then hopefully it would have been revealed. But as far as I can see, with every bit of software, it all worked pretty much as expected. However, Cubase was a bit more troublesome. When you run Cubase for the first time, there seems to be a little something that goes on. It has to refine plugins and bits and pieces like that. And then the e-licensor seems to bomb out, but it allows Cubase to continue running. And also I've had some crashes on exit since running the update. So there's definitely something going on in Cubase. And I imagine that's what Steinberg sort of ran into and probably has something to do with the statement they released. However, a performance drop is not really what I experienced. However, it's now been a year since Windows 10 came out. It's been six months since I've had the Surface Pro 4. So what I am going to do is over the next few weeks, I'm going to put together another large array of tests, run everything I can think of on the Surface Pro 4 to recheck and retest and to see where we are now in terms of compatibility with audio and music software. There's one thing that I have noticed on the Surface Pro 4 is that my power profile has been messed with. Uh, I used a registry hack to allow me to access all of the power profile options and those have all disappeared again. The other thing is that Microsoft seems to have introduced a whole raft of little apps to run in the background. Whereas previously there was like half a dozen that you had to turn off, now there's like 20, including stuff that has absolutely no business running in the background. So there may be other stuff in here which is all supposed to be enormously helpful for the everyday user which is going to end up causing us a bit of a problem. 
but we shall see. So stay tuned for more videos on making music and tweaking and getting it all to work, which is what we're about. So in the meantime, I hope that was useful. I hope that was interesting. Please let me know what sort of results you get. I have heard from someone who had some trouble with timing in a drum machine since running the update. So who knows what's going to happen on your machine. So, you know, get in touch. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. <laughs>